Hi guys, and welcome to episode eight of Music with Paul. Um, I hope you're all still doing really well and you're all hanging in there and uh, getting on okay. Um, I know that there's a slow thing of getting back into school life, um, so hopefully I'll get to see some of you soon. Uh, but in the meantime, keep watching the videos, I'll keep making them for you and uh, you, can, you can learn loads of cool stuff at home. Uh, yeah, so let's crack on. Okay, so for this week's lesson, we're going to start something slightly new, but it's going to follow on from all that amazing work you've done so far learning the notes on the stave and on the piano. Um, now, today we're going to start looking at something quite important. We're going to look at a scale. Now, a scale is basically uh, a set of notes that go either up or down, so ascend or descend. Um, all notes together. So, for example, you've probably heard them before uh, without realising it. Um, and when you first start learning an instrument, um, a major scale, which is what we're going to look at today, is probably the first thing that you'll learn how to play. And it kind of goes da 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 So that's a major scale, okay? I'm probably not explaining it very well, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna let Julie Andrews explain it um, from The Sound of Music. So have a look at this. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. Oh, let's see if I can make it easier. Do, a deer, a female deer. Re, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself Far, a long, long way to run <laughs> So, a needle pulling thread La, a note to follow so <laughs> Tea, a drink with jam and bread That will bring us back to do Oh, 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 do! A deer, <laughs> a female deer a drop of golden sun Me! A name I call myself Fa! A long, long way to run So! A needle pulling thread La! A note to follow so Tea! A drink with jam and bread That will bring us back to do A deer, a female deer Ray, a drop of golden sun So, as Julie Andrews was doing it there in The Sound of Music, she, instead of using uh, Lars or, or numbers or the names of the notes, she used um, a method called Do, Re, Mi, which is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, which is basically the same thing. It's just giving them those names so that you remember where they go, okay? But we're going to look at it a bit more in depth now, okay? Now, how do you form a major scale, okay? Uh, a major scale has a simple rule to it that if you follow this rule, you'll always get it right. Okay, now it doesn't necessarily make it easier to sing or to play, but if you remember this rule, you'll be able to work it out at least and then be able to find the right notes. Now, a major scale is made up of tones or semitones. Now, if you remember back to some of our lessons before, we learned what those are, but I'll give you a reminder. A tone 
is the distance between one note to the next whole note, okay? So for example, the difference between C and D is a tone. Now a semitone is kind of half a note, all right? Now in between C and D, if you remember what we did last time, there's a black note called C sharp or D flat. Now that is a semitone. So if you moved from C to C sharp, that's just a semitone, okay? That's half a step. For a tone, we go the full step, C to D, all right? Basically, the notes that are next, immediately next door are semitones, and if you have to jump a note, that's a tone. Does that make sense? Hope so. Now, the formula, the way you remember a major scale, and this is always the same, it doesn't matter what note you start on, this rule is always the same. And it goes like this, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So you do two tones and then a semitone and then three tones and then a semitone, okay? So for example, if you started on note one, you'd move a whole tone to note two, then a whole tone to note three, but then for the next one, you just move half a tone, so a semitone to the next one. But then you move another tone, and then another tone, and then another tone, but then a semitone to get to the last note, okay? And here's something that will make it a bit easier to understand. I'm gonna show you. Um, so, let's look at C major. Now the reason why we're gonna look at C major is because on the piano, it means you don't have to use any of the black notes because conveniently, the semitones fall in the right place, and that'll be that'll make sense in a minute. Um, so we're going to start on the note C and make a major scale by following the order of semitones and tones, as we've just mentioned. So from C, we need to go up one tone or a whole step to D. Okay. Now from D, we go up another tone because it's tone, tone, semitone. So we go up another tone to E. All right, now when we've got to E, then our next step, if we're following that rule, tone, tone, now we've got a semitone. So from E, we have to move up just a semitone. Now on the in the C major scale, we're lucky because that just means we go to F, because on the piano, remember, there's no note in between E and F. So we go from E to F, which is a semitone. Now we're back to the tones again. So from F to G, it's another tone. Then another tone from G to A, that's a whole step again. And then another whole step from A to B, another tone from A to B. Now we're nearly there because you'll notice that we've got all the way back to our starting note again, C. And between B and C, there's no black note, there's no semitone in between. So we just move the semitone up to C. So you've gone tone, tone, semitone. Tone, 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 semitone, okay? So again, I'll explain that again. We started off at C, we moved a tone to D, and then a tone to E, then it's only a semitone to F, then a tone to G, a tone to A, a tone to B, and then just a semitone up to C again. Okay, now if you listen to it, I'm gonna play you that C major scale now on the piano. And if you listen, you should be able to hear that those semitones are smaller steps up than the tones are. Okay, so this is how the C major scale sounds. Okay, so hopefully that made some sense to you. Now remember that trick, that formula, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, that works for a major scale wherever you start, okay? If you started on F, it would work. You just have to work out where the tones and the semitones are. If you started on B, it would work, but you'd have to work out where the tones and the semitones are. Now for all of the other keys so if you're doing it in c c major we're okay because we just use all the white notes on the piano 
if you start on a different note, if you start on an A or a B or a D or a G or any of the other notes, you will have to use some of the black notes to make those tones or semitones where they're appropriate. If you want to have a go and you've got a keyboard at home or a piano at home, try starting on a note and working out tone, then tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, and see if you can make it sound the same as the major scale that we listen to. So last week we looked at the string family of instruments um, and I hope you enjoyed learning about those. Um, this week we're going to start looking at a different family, uh, the woodwind family. Okay. Now the instruments in this family all used to be made out of wood which gives them their name. Uh, today they are made out of wood uh, but also metal, plastic or some combination of those. Uh, all of them basically are narrow cylinders or pipes with holes in them, uh, an opening at the bottom end and a mouthpiece at the top. Uh, now you play them by blowing air through the mouthpiece, uh, that's what the way the wind comes from in the word woodwind, and opening or closing the holes with your fingers to change the pitch. Um, metal caps called keys cover the holes of quite a lot of woodwind instruments um, to help you Un, you know, cover the holes up or not. Um, those of you that played a recorder, a recorder is a woodwind instrument, and you don't have any clasps or metal caps on that, you just use your fingers to cover the holes. But sometimes the instruments are longer, so you need things to be able to uh, stretch down further to cover those holes. Uh, the mouthpieces for some woodwind instruments, including the clarinet, the oboe, and the bassoon, use a thin piece of wood called a reed. Um, which vibrates when you blow across it. The clarinet uses a single reed made of one piece of wood, while the oboe and the bassoon use a double reed, which is two pieces joined together. Uh, just as with the stringed instruments that we looked at last week, the smaller woodwind instruments play higher pitches, while the longer and larger instruments play the lower notes. Okay. The woodwind family of instruments includes, from the highest sounding instruments to the lowest, um, in the orchestra, the piccolo, the flute, the oboe, the English horn, the clarinet, the E-flat clarinet, the bass clarinet, the bassoon, and the contrabassoon. So uh, I'm going to talk through a few of those main ones for you now, and uh, yeah, let's see you get on. Now first of all, the flute. Uh, the flute is the oldest of all instruments that produce pitch sounds, uh, not just rhythms, and was originally made from wood, stone, clay or hollow reeds like uh, bamboo. Modern flutes are made of silver, gold or platinum. They are generally two to four flutes in an orchestra. Uh, a standard flute is a little over two feet long and is often featured playing the melody of a song, so it usually plays the tune. Uh, you play the flute by holding it sideways with both hands and blowing across a hole in the mouthpiece. Uh, a bit like if you blow across the top of a bottle and you make it make that sound. Uh, your fingers open and close the keys, which changes the pitch. Uh, a piccolo is a shorter version of the flute, um, which means, and piccolo means small in Italian. At half the size of a standard flute, piccolos play the highest notes of all the woodwinds in the orchestra. Um, in the orchestra, one of the flute players will also play uh, the piccolo if it's required. So usually, if there's a tune where you need some really, really high notes, one of the flute players will get a piccolo out and play those bits. Okay. The high piping sound of the piccolo is also heard in traditional drum corps and marching band music. So if you've ever listened to some of that marching music that soldiers play sometimes, uh, a piccolo is often used in that. Okay. Now, the oboe. The oboe is a two foot long black cylinder with metal keys covering its holes and its mouthpiece uses a double reed, which we talked about earlier, which vibrates when you blow through it. The vibration of the reed makes the air inside the oboe move and thus creates sound. To play it, you hold the oboe upright, blow through the double reed in your mouth and use both hands to press down on the keys to open and close the holes to change the pitch. 
There are usually two to four oboes in the orchestra again, and they produce a wide range of pitches from haunting sounds to warm, velvety, smooth notes, uh, which makes the sound of the oboe very memorable. In addition to playing in the orchestra, the first oboist, so usually there'll be um, a leader of the oboe section, so whoever's the best oboe player will be the first oboist, and he's responsible or she's responsible for tuning the whole orchestra uh, before a concert. So if you ever go and see an orchestra play, uh, usually what will happen is they'll get an, uh, the first oboist to play an A on the oboe, and everyone in the whole orchestra tunes their instrument to that A to make sure they're all in tune together. Now, this one's an interesting one, the English horn. And it's interesting because despite its name, it's not English and it isn't a horn. So it's a bit of a weird name for it, isn't it? The English horn is actually closely related to the oboe. Uh, it also uses a double reed and it's played in the same manner. It's slightly longer than an oboe and its tube is a bit wider. Um, at the bottom end of the English horn, it opens out to a round bell shape, which gives a warmer, fuller sound. Um, because it's larger, the English horn also has a lower pitch range than an oboe. Um, and again, in an orchestra, if they need the English horn, usually what will happen is one of the oboe players will get out an English horn and play that instead of the oboe, uh, if they need those lower sounds or that particular sound for that song. Uh, right, the clarinet. The clarinet could easily be mistaken for an oboe, except for the mouthpiece, which uses a single reed. Clarinets come in a number of different sizes, and the standard B-flat clarinet is just over two feet long. Some musical works require the clarinetist to play several types of clarinet in the same piece. Uh, again, they have two to four clarinets in an orchestra. Uh, they, both, they play both the melodies and harmonies, and they have a dark, rich sound in their lower notes, while the upper part of the clarinet's range is bright and resonant. So they're quite useful, they're quite versatile, so they can play nice, bright tunes, but they can also have warmer sounds underneath uh, if they're playing the harmonies. Um, you play the clarinet like you do an oboe, um, holding upright and blowing through the reed, uh, and using your hands to change the pitches by opening and closing the keys with your fingers. So it's similar to the other ones. Now there are other types of clarinets. There's an E-flat clarinet, um, which is a bit smaller than the normal one, um, and it plays higher notes. But there's also the bass clarinets, um, which is really large, um, and uh, the top and the bottom bits are bent to make it easier for the musicians to hold it and play it, um, because it's very long otherwise. Um, it's greater length allows to play some of the lowest notes in the whole orchestra. The bassoon is a long pipe doubled in half made of wood with many keys. The bend in the pipe makes it possible for musicians to play it comfortably because if it was straight it would be about nine feet long. Like the oboe, the bassoon uses a double reed which is fitted into a curved metal mouthpiece. And again there are usually two to four bassoons in an orchestra and they have a similar range to that of a cello which we looked at last time. Bassoons usually play lower harmonies, but you'll sometimes hear their hollow low notes featured in a melody. So if, depending on the piece of music, it might be in the melody, but usually they play uh, in the harmony parts. Uh, you play the bassoon by holding it upright and blowing through the double reed again. And the air travels down the tube, makes a U-turn in the bend, and then goes out the top. Uh, just like the oboe, you use both hands to press on the keys to open and close the holes and change the pitch. And lastly, the contrabassoon. Um, basically, imagine a longer bassoon with a wider pipe. Uh, the contrabassoon is the grandfather of the wind section and is so much larger than a regular bassoon that its tube is doubled over twice to allow the player to hold it. It takes a lot of breath to make sound come out of such a long pipe. Uh, the lone contrabassoon plays the lowest notes in the entire orchestra. Uh, so there's usually only one contrabassoon in an orchestra and it plays the really, really low notes. So I hope you found that interesting. I'm going to now play you a few clips of some of those woodwind instruments so you can have a listen to how they sound, so you can see them being played and have a listen to what they sound like uh, in real life.
music challenge for this week you've probably guessed what it is already um it is to think of five artists or find five artists or bands that begin with the letter f now once again i'll remind you please don't just find the names and write them down have a listen to them and see if you discover some music that you like you might not like it you might like it um see if you can find some bands and artists you've never heard of before that begin with f um and uh yeah see what you think Anyway, thank you so much for watching once more. Um, it's been really fun doing all these lessons for you. I hope you're still enjoying them. Uh, yeah, hopefully see you all soon as well. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>